Welcome everybody to the lesson for the day. Um, I should have an intro for that, but you know, welcome. Why not welcome? I like welcoming people. I'm glad I can give you a welcome. You know, you're very welcome to participate. Um, in this day, we're gonna go over on this day rather. We're gonna go over a Sejuani game. Now this game looks a little bit self-explanatory. We only had physical damage, and we had like this crazy AP Nami, which was not really working out um i went kind of like ap ish remember this gives the ability power now this is the like new uh ap mr item um and i also took a leandre so we could have some representation of mixed damage i don't know that this was all necessary like maybe this would have been fine going frost queens and ruby sightstone that seems like it could have been fine this is a little much to me i would have liked a little bit more utility to make sure that um these guys could have done their job a little bit more effectively. Uh, but, you know, whatever. This is the game we were given. Um, what's important to note is, despite uh, being a, basically a physical damage composition, uh, the Lee Sin was itemizing a little bit sooner. But most of these items were very late. Like, these were the last two items on the support. Um, this didn't come out towards, like, I think till... Maybe it was before Lord Dominic, or Mortal Reminder, and the Caulfield. But this was a while to come out. Um, as you can see, just now, Vayne was starting some armor. This, I think, was her last item. So it wasn't, it wasn't as simple as we got itemized against because they could itemize just armor and beat us. So I want to see what happened and what we could have done. Because again, as Sejuani, we have a lot of playmaking potential. And since we were bringing out some of that mixed damage, I want to see if there was opportunities for us to have played that better. So we'll go ahead and hop in the replay. Try and speed through as we've been doing lately. Speed through the sort of downtime parts. And really try and dive in on the points of conflict and see what we could do here. See what we could have done a little better. and hop forward here and i think uh every sedge game we did the aggressive check to see if they were doing the five point start and when i say five point start i mean the so like top laners here junglers here ad and support are here or some mix of mid laner here like theoretically there should be the mid here and that's the five point start but you almost never get like a perfect five point start and the mid is kind of optional to be honest what would be nice is if there was a top laner here, a mid or jungle here, a mid or jungle here, and the bot lane hanging out here. That's what should be happening in solo queue on most accounts, uh, but that's not what's happening most of the time. So as you see, we even get vision of Aurelia being there, which is unfortunate because that pings her off to, okay, maybe I should rotate around seeing him leave in the lane and then mundo actually is showing by dipping in and out of the brush so that makes this impossible for me to start so i make my way down here i start pinging and nami's just afk we're gonna see that uh lucian actually says in chat like oh it's too late i'm not gonna leash you so we had a really rough start we didn't get a leash this game uh we were able to make the work okay let's drop down so we're not going super choppy but yeah as you can see like nami is still afk so Maybe we could have got a leash, but I'm going to chalk that less up to Lucian being a dick and being like in chat. No, it's too late. <laughs> you adapted to the situation and didn't try and invade and give first blood. Um, so it's an early gank from the Lee Sin, which is unfortunate for us. It looks like he was pathing, presuming that maybe we were in the jungle, which means we could have taken advantage of that. And yeah, he even throws down the ward there defensively. So maybe we could have still started red, but I think it's best to play it safe and not assume we get that for free. Um, luckily for us, of course, the Zed does survive it. Uh, it does take a flash of Lux during that and both his summoners to make that out, but it's all right. I believe the first blood went on to our Lucian, if I recall correctly. I'm not sure, it just showed. I wasn't uh, paying some attention to that though. I'm looking elsewhere on the map. I show here, and this probably 
isn't really that valuable. I didn't want to invade. And I figured, okay, if I show at least maybe I give a little alleviation of the pressure so he can throw down his shadow and get some harass in. Um, or just feel a little safer last hitting turret uh, minions that are close to the turret. So I stick around here. I actually go fairly aggressively into the jungle here. This is a little risky with the ward. Um, okay, so yeah, I remember this game now. <laughs> so this is very risky, right? Charging in like that, especially once it's warded. I should be pathing like this and using my W in this angle. The reason I go over to the bush is to get the Green Father's Gift uh, from Mastery turned on, just to clear this a little bit quicker, but that's not nearly as important. Zed's going to be applying pressure up here through the mid lane. So Lux is going to be forced to stay mostly away. The majority of what she can do is throw like an E out here. She can't really hit too much further, unless if she decides to seed a minion wave of pressure to Zed and miss some XP and gold. But since I don't really know where Lee Sin is, I'm not 100% sure. Here, let's actually turn this off because it's a little bit spoiler. Um, we're not really super confident in this. We know that Fiora's not rotating yet because we see her on the minimap. As we can see, she's on her way. But she's kind of low, so we're feeling a little confident. And since we have a little bit of vision, we're looking good. Now, this I think was fine if I charged to right here, right? If I had charged to just right here and got the immediate damage instead of charging all the way out to here, that's like, what, four Teemos of distance I could have? And during that, oops, we need to go over to this. Like, this is, I think, last hitting those as appropriately as possible. But just imagine, like, if I just charged, the distance would be, like, that much of a difference. And sure, my Q is still on cooldown, but I would very easily be able to get to this blast cone and jump over without any problem. Instead, a whole mess happens, right? So Lee Sin's close enough to land his Q, which wouldn't have happened if I had positioned those raptors a little differently. Since she flashes aggressively to make sure she would take the blast cone with me, I actually decided to just knock her out of here. And I very luckily catch Lee Sin too. I wasn't expecting to. And because of that, she has a dash. So I'm thinking, all right, let me create another wall here. Look for the back here. I still have my flash available, so what I'm thinking is I can just flash this wall if they come check. And I actually fail flash. So that's obviously really bad. The idea would be I could flash over and then queue this wall to follow up, or save the queue to get some return damage. And also, since I'm already there, I should have got the E way sooner. So that CC doesn't come out nearly in time. Zed burns his flash for no reason there because he was able to uh, get out with his flash. And Zed, in the end, ends up going down. So that was a bit of a bad start. Now, with Mundo here, I could have gone back into support. But I'm thinking, hey, I'm so low that I need to uh, heal up on these wolves. And if Mundo can get a kill, great. If not, me being there probably wouldn't have done much aside from getting me killed. Because even with the regen from the smite, like, this is about how low I was the whole time. That's unfortunate. Unfortunate start. And me definitely being far too aggressive. So I think... I think so far I need to just be less aggressive. At the early game. I think this developed because... We came in today with the mindset of like, oh, Sed is so OP because she was winning for us. Yeah, this is unfortunate. We definitely need to get it. Well, um, she was so close. Let's actually look back and see if I could have gotten a kill on Sejuani there. Or a kill on the Vayne there. So she's super dead. <laughs> right? Lucian is, rather. And I don't see any target that's immediately, like, in danger. I'm trying to get my W on the Vayne as much as I can. Which I do get both procs on it, but at this point, I'm just engaging out, right? I think there's no reason that I can get this vein. Unfortunately, the minions aggro to her, or fortunately for us. Um, but unfortunately, I wasn't assuming that they would aggro to her. So I didn't, like, preemptively follow that up. Getting the E out here does give us a little additional CC. What is the miracle 
is that Nami caught this bubble and we noticed that Vayne went out of vision and then came back in and it's when she came in and caught the bubble that she got low. And the reason that she did that was my movement went forward and then my movement went back to where it is now. So I think she actually mirrored me. If I continued to try and chase her, she probably would have just kept kiting out this way and not risked some damage like this because this is a Nami bubble, you know? Um, I probably have more damage than that. So she doesn't want to be too close to me. So I think I actually couldn't have gotten a kill right there. Maybe I could have gone back in after that point. If instead of going this last hitch before coming back, I could have gone like this, or God forbid I go like that. That would put me in Q range. I'm not sure if my Q is available, and unfortunately, the uh, when you pause the game, your cooldowns like just keep ticking, so I can't tell if it was available right now. Definitely would have been able to get the kill on her, but I would have died in exchange because Lux was there. So I think that was the right call to not be so bloodthirsty there and to back off. But I think positionally, I'm being far too aggressive. I'm being too aggressive in that invade. Walking up through here earlier in the game to come for this gank, I think was too aggressive. I think I could have just gotten scuttle or like just backed off or looked for something bot. I think uh, positionally I'm being too aggressive. I think so far uh, with my rotations around the map. On the map, I'm too aggressive. So far, positionally, in the actual conflicts, I think I'm doing okay. We pick up red buff. It's gonna help us get... Looks like we were waiting on something. Actually, we were probably debating what to get there, but... We're gonna go over here. We're gonna pick up blue. I think we offered it to Zed, but he chose not to. That's fine. Now, again, this is pretty aggressive. Since we saw Lee Sin here that means their mid isn't around and it's probably going to come straight to lane so i think it's actually okay to do this and this is the safest camp by far to invade we have a lot of pressure top we know they're not on drake um uh, but we did just see lee sin here so he's probably not like if he hasn't already queued over he's certainly not coming so again i think i charge a little bit too far there Unfortunately, I wasn't uh, able to catch Lee Sin before he died, so that ult didn't hit anybody. I mean, Mundo did get the kill, which was the best I, uh, ideal situation there. But it would have been nice if I didn't have to uh, ult immediately after. So, being a little aggressive again with my positioning here. Because we did have Vision of Lee Sin coming over. And I believe I knew that. So I'm trying to bait... Like, Fiora to separate a little bit from Lee Sin. And then I can go in on her and we can get some initial damage. I think this is wrong. I think Fiora is a skirmisher. Even though we have level advantage on her, Lee Sin has level advantage on me. The Mundo looks to go in. I'm just sitting in the bush the whole time. And I finally do get a charge on her. For some reason they had started Rift Herald. I don't know. It's a little, a little aggressive. So we go in for this. I try and pull Lee Sin away. If he follows up on that Q, he opts not to. He opts to go for Helping Fiora, which is definitely the right choice there. I got ulted by Lee Sin. We are able to finish off Fiora, and we get the last kill onto Lee Sin there without Mundo dying. Very close. A little bit risky of a fight there, and that was a glitch, I think, of the E resetting. Um, it's good to look to invade immediately after, to see no camps up. Um, we could have maybe made this happen. I think Zed doesn't come. No, he does come, okay. Just debated a little while, so. Seeing Lux top, this should be uh, an easy Rift Herald for free. Great. We take it because we want to make sure that our laners are still able to use their Trinket Wards to cover. And since we're tanking it most of the time, um, we're gonna be immediately making use out of the advanced recall. Again, our window shopping could be a little better. I think I'm waiting on an item there, but could do a little less window shopping. And unfortunately we wind up, uh, we go here to try and save the illusion, and we do get a turn. 
We get a nice ultimate on the Lee Sin, and because of that, we are able to burst him out before the uh, ultimate comes out from Terror. I do decide to turn back on the red buff here. I think. No, that was wrong. So I was thinking, like, there wouldn't be enough to make that work from the chase. I didn't see the Mundo teleport, so. A little bit poor on the map awareness there. I could have been a part of that. Maybe we would have got another kill. Now they turn on to Drake. My thinking was we could push this out quicker. Get this turret and then return back. And actually maybe get two because I have Rift Herald, remember. So I'm pinging Rift Herald this whole time. I'm saying we should go for the uh, fight. We do have Mundo to tank, so I say, okay. You know, since they're there, since uh, there's... I don't think that much threat of a steal because they're four in Fiora's top. So the most that could come in is a support with Lee Sin. I would think that would be a free kill on Lee Sin, especially once we identify turrets here. Great. So we're trying to get the shove. Again, I'm pinging for assistance. Fortunately, Zed just go back. I summon the Rift Herald in the brush so we can try and get this down to prevent it head buddy, which we do. Now what's unfortunate is the skirmish here, right? We're not able to get too much out of the skirmish. And because there's a skirmish that we have to back out of, or I think actually Nami died there. Yeah, Nami died right here. So, because of that, Rift Herald just gets the charge damage in. And this was too aggressive. I shouldn't have gone back in for a Q there. I was thinking since we had the tank of Rift Herald, we could have made something happen, but that was too aggressive. I think overall, again, with the macro we're being too aggressive but the micro we're being all right this was also very aggressive we do get the blue buff and we fail flash there to try and get over the wall mundo is able to finish him off so overall uh it winds up being a one for one and i deny the blue so that's just such an aggressive play you know i just i'm not convinced that these are the correct choices when i could be rotating around like there was a buff to give over to Zed there. Trying to look for a play on Lux. And he actually does a little taunt there. But she winds up going back, so. As soon as the minion dies, I poke out. And I look to give this over to Zed, but he doesn't really seem to want it. I could have picked up Skullu there. I was actually looking for the gank onto Fiora. And we do force the flash, but I whip the ultimate a bit there. Since our turret's already done, we are able to finish off. So that was good. It was alright. I looked to make the play mid first. Unfortunately, Zed uh, didn't mean to take the shadow there, I don't think. Uh, he popped back. I think he wanted one more auto on Lux, but... I'm hanging out here. Trying to alleviate pressure, trying to dissuade them, but it's not working. Just try and clear out the wave as much as possible and look to clear the jungle. That seems fine. Pick up another red, set again, or another blue, because that again doesn't want it. Um, seems okay so far. Nothing super glaring. Um, we pick up the haunting guys to again start bringing the magic damage down. The additional pen really is like, hey, you guys gotta start, excuse me, you guys gotta start building MR. Because I'm already penning and doing true damage. And since I have a strong scoreline, they will actually be a bit of uh, a bit afraid of me. So it looks like the Terracos having connection problems. This is fortunate for us. Do look to get this as soon as I saw it was warded. Made me a little wary, so I started to reach it out. I think that was correct. Unfortunately, we're not able to get the smite off. He just backed away so he realized that. Nami gets a really sick bubble. And I actually get the kill with that ult. I probably didn't need to. But the reason I did was because this is Fire Drake. And Fire Drake, uh, Infernal Drake rather, is the most important element in Dragon. Uh, in most people's minds at least. So we are able to secure it because of that kill. So I think it was worth investing that kill. Meanwhile, we're getting a 1 for 1 trade here. We should ult while the charge ult is up. Which is unfortunate. And we're chasing uh, Lee Sin, who's able to flash. And we probably could have got a dive onto Terra. But we just didn't really commit there. We do try and tank to give them an option to go on him, but... Vayne is back at this point, and 
Nami was so low she tanked some bird shots, she dies rather quickly. I think this is too aggressive with Vayne there. Like, I was aware Vayne was there and Nami just died. And I still dove this. I think this is far too aggressive. I'm just getting baited in by how low Tarek is, but Tarek's tanky, Tarek has heal. His ult is down, sure, but didn't need to be that way. I'm looking to go back in, but I decide not to, because I don't think I would have made a difference. The TP coming in, maybe something could have happened, but I'm so low, I don't want to give another kill. And actually, no, I do have quite a bit of HP. I, I remember feeling more. Oh no, I think it's because I just smited the skull crab. Threw down the smoke. Yeah, that's an. Uh, that cooldown's coming up quicker. It's because I had two smiteries stacked up. So I think I was probably too low. I probably was right to back off there. Unfortunately, we're going to lose a turret because of it. Luckily for us, they rotate to where there's no objective. So that does open up an opportunity for us to go here. Um, and I was calling out for like a rotation this way, but Lucian's already committed so hard to being bot side. Uh, it's just not going to work out. If Lucian had come up mid to support Zed and we had pushed that out, and then we all collapsed here, we might have been able to make that work. Because since there's no objective here, they must all be going back if they retreated out this way. So unfortunately we weren't able to make that happen. Went back, grabbed ourselves a control ward so we can start extending vision up there again. We're just going to keep securing the blues now. Because that snake clearly doesn't really want it. I look for the sweep there. Uh, Mundo actually tries to go aggressive onto her here. Uh, which I was not expecting, so I'm really late for her to get over. And she does have GA, so we do need to be careful. I put the priority on the Lee Sin. Because he doesn't have GA for one. And for two, he's our smite carrier, so if we win this fight, we can rotate right on over this way. Uh, Lucian being bot makes that a little difficult, but again, without smite, it is possible. So, Mundo's got his ultimate. Uh, I think he has it running. I'm not entirely sure, but... I do finally turn on a viewer just because there's a little bit of time I can't get my E. And I point blank ulter just because I think, okay, we can knock the GA down. And I'm thinking Nami's gonna be fine here, she can back off as needed. So we can focus finishing Fiora, but then Nami dies, and it's like, whoa, that was our smite that we were supposed to be able to have locked down just from the positioning of Nami. So we're going to give up this, and we're going to turn to secure the smite. Because with their smite down, like I said, we have the objective control. Lux gets a really good rotation, and we almost don't get him. We do actually get Fiora and Lee Sin. And because it's Mundo, A, Mundo's fine. Zed matches the rotation. Really good match by Zed. And because of that, we're able to think about doing this. But with Mundo so low, not quite able to make it work. And certainly without uh, Lucian nearby, not able to make it work. So I do intentionally head up there uh, to, get the, to get the aggro from the turret onto me so Zed can all in. But unfortunately, Tarek has his ultimate up, and Zed's ultimate gets entirely blocked by Tarek, which means later he doesn't have it available for this fight, and then I am sniped out. So. Unfortunate sequence of events there. Um, yeah, maybe after seeing Zed's ult was down, I shouldn't have been playing aggressive. I feel like he went in really hard though, so I think it was kind of right for me to back him up. Because you gotta commit to your team's play. This is just us watching Lucian do well. <laughs> um, but you know, we could have probably played that better and prevented our own death. But I think we were playing a little too cautiously before, or a little too aggressively. So I'm not so upset with myself for playing a little bit more cautiously and making that mistake. What I am upset is for me continuing to still be too aggressive. Right? Smite a little bit early there. I actually am not able to spew over the wall. I think I hit somebody. And we're not able to rotate out. But we did get the Drake. It was the Mountain Drake. A second Mountain Drake on top of an Infernal. So that makes this really easy to melt. So that was, I would gladly trade my life for that in this video game. Plus it makes it so hard for them to get the Baron down. Because they don't have any dragons. Let alone like these particularly good ones. And with, I believe that's our control ward down. 
We do have some good vision control over there. It's uh, provides a buffer so now we can go in for the support. Great, we got a flash there. Wonderful. I start rotating right back up to the Baron area. To try and get control again, because I do have Smite Stone in this game. And I believe my Oracles was up. So I'm thinking, okay, if they look for a fight there, that must be one they for sure can win without me. Because they have a complete option to disengage. I reposition to make the scuttle kind of stay neutral there so I can get quickly back. Unfortunately, I'm not entirely sure what happened here. It doesn't really matter though. I'm not going to go back and rewatch it because with the Nami ult, they should have been able to disengage properly. It's just somebody got caught. So after that happened, I'm thinking like, okay, I don't want to go in here because she's going to die to Fiora, which is going to give them a huge zone. But with Zed going in, I kind of look for it to try and give him support. I think that was the right amount of, like, looking for it but not committing. Because, again, we didn't have Lucian there, who's actually about to get caught out now by Lee Sin. Um, and we were already down our Mundo and Nami. So it's very unlikely that we're going to get a kill there. So just rotating over, picking up what objectives we can. We actually very, very luckily are able to deny that out of uh, Lux. We do have to ult there. But we do have blue, so we got to reduce cooldown on the ultimate. Not as bad as it could have been. Do deny the Lux from blue. We were able to get back here in time. Uh, to get, deny the inhibitor turret going down. Maybe if I had committed to going on to Tarek there, we could have queued him instead of queuing that minion away. Perhaps a position where, again, I'm not too upset about myself making a little bit more defensive plays. It's the over aggression early on that I'm really upset from. So if that is GA down, we have to be careful about this exact scenario that we're getting out. So I do throw my ult to try and make sure if she continues to path the way, we'll at least hit her with the ult. Go in to try and support the Mundo. Try and get damage down before the Tarek ult. Mostly back lane, I'm thinking to try and back up here. Good uh, all in on the Zed to make sure we can finish off the lane. And then as soon as I see Lee Sin here jump over this wall, immediately turn on him, which makes the Baron even more secure. So this should be a free Baron. I don't exactly recall what happened here. This is going to be slightly contested. The Lucian is playing the role of Zoni. So we are able to get that for free. Very nice. I think we cleared this out to get a little bit more gold. Uh, to make sure we could top ourselves off with the giant belt after completing our item, if I recall correctly. Oh no, it was the top our giant spell off with the cloth armor. Okay. Um, so we charge up here. Trying to create the pressure mid and use the Baron buff as much as possible. This is just unfortunate. Once we all have Baron, we shouldn't we should play very defensively and always kite away and just like time spent with Baron is time well spent. You know, we're getting free pressure that way. Um, once the veil goes down, I play more defensively. Just trying to hold the Baron mid to hold them mid and give Mundo and Lucian time to push side lanes. Team Fiora, I look for a turn. This is actually something that like Lucian like flamed me for about fighting. Like, why fight? We can't win fights, blah blah blah. He's starting the Baron, and like I think I'm just forced to fight this out, and she's very low. Yeah, Lucian just stays on the Drake the whole time. And it's we have Baron already, and this is just a mountain drake when we have Baron. So time fighting is time away from minions using our Baron buff let alone securing a drake that is to secure Baron buff, you know? So I think this was just a split call from the team. And when you have a split call and it's what became a 5v3, there's just no way we can make that work, so. Uh, good flash by her to deny my Q to create distance and she does kick us out. Just unfortunate. Good on Mundo for creating pressure while that's happening. Because again, that's exactly... Like, if we if we are going to be here and positioning around this, what we need to do is kite fights, right? We should be... We should have all kited down this direction. 
And sure, give them a little free time with the Drake. Hell, maybe they even get it, which they wound up getting anyway, right? But even if they do, that's time Mundo got to push this with Baron buff on him the whole time. Because remember, we are wearing Baron buff. And like Mundo still had it. Mundo hadn't died before that engagement. So I think it was the right call to try and just kite that out as long as possible. Again, just a split call from Lucian. Um, Mundo is able to get the inner turret I think he got on that push. Um, does he die from this? I don't think he does. Yeah, I think he's all right here. Well, uh, he does have to flash, okay. So unfortunate, um, and there's not gonna be objectives up on the map for a little while. Oh, they actually do wind up chasing me So I run a mid just trying to alleviate pressure because this is a bearer inhibitor. As soon as I see Fiora, I back off. That's good. I rotate this way because I think, yeah, she's going to go for it. And unfortunately, she does. I ping the assist as soon as I realized that she was in lane, but the team just didn't come. So we did just lose that, which is unfortunate. But seeing that maybe we have an opportunity to cut her off doesn't quite look like it. And she does have GA, so going for the fight there, probably not the best. And Lucian trying to solo her. Unfortunately, the blue bus down, so we can't pick that up. Maybe grabbing Scuttle there would have been right. This is, may have been one of those situations. Well, no. We do have such a numbers advantage. I think it was right when we need to rotate here. We throw that ult out just to make sure we can lock down Lux. And as soon as I have a shot on Lux, I throw it out. Unfortunately, Mundo looking for a little bit more of the down there. Remember, Nami's even more squishy than normal because she's got like full APIs. Unfortunately, that Zed just can't get quite enough damage through. So it is a 1 for 0. Could have been a 1 for 1 in what would have been a really nice trade of an AP Nami for a Bane, but there's not quite enough damage. Seeing our team rotating top, I decided to stay mid, which I think is the right call. Just to let them take the uh, majority of the minions that I give golden experience and then put myself mid where I can stop the pressure from these. I see that I need another item so I wind up looking for some additional gold here. Unfortunately all the camps were taken down not to my knowledge. So we clear out the crugs here. We get our item. That will enable us to get back on the map before this variant starts. Fight's breaking out here, but Mundo goes where he pleases, and Lucian is able to dash over the wall because he's a fairly mobile ADC. And we rotate straight back up here. Now, it would have been possible to just ult immediately to try and get that last bit of burst damage onto Lee Sin. Maybe that's a missed opportunity. This is certainly wrong, I think. People were not in proper position. Let's actually look back to follow up on that. Let's fast forward just a little bit. Okay. So I think this is, this is a problem I have just in a number of situations. I think, oh man, if only I had ulted back here before we flashed, that was a kill, darn. So I overcompensate. And I throw this out to try and time the invulnerability to end, which I do, but since it's such a large distance, I actually just missed the last bit of the hitbox there. But most importantly, like look at where my team is positioned on the minimap, right? There's a nice little concave but this is not a concave ability. This is a let's immediately like all dash in and like shadow in and like land a good follow up bubble to really punish this landing properly. Not only do I miss the landing, which I think was so close that's forgivable, but this is just not, nobody's close enough to follow up on it. So I think this is misusage of my ultimate. So I dive in, the moon goes already low, everybody's already low. This was just a poor choice for me to engage that. Sure, we get some good damage on the Fiora. We're not even able to finish her off in the end though. And we look to try and get out. Fiora. So we get the flash. We smite for a little extra health. But unfortunately, it's either me or Zed. So Zed courageously says it'll be me. I think he meant to hold Fiora there. But nonetheless, we make it out, which does protect our smite. So we can always have a chance to smite contest. But that's our whole team down. So we just in, and they're able to pull out. So that's the game. I think there were a couple lessons we could learn from that. So in the early game, and I, I'm 
harping on this not just because of this game because it wasn't super pronounced this game i mean it definitely didn't go well for us but we weren't particularly punished this game i feel like in other games we were consistently punished for something that showed up here which was our over aggression as far as like what we thought we could take on the map towards a little bit later in the day we started to do much better like okay see the jungler there counter jungle here see the jungler here counter jungle there we started to do that properly but i think this was just me being like ah, i can fucking counter jungle i've been doing good on edge let me counter jungle like that's the wrong attitude i'm not doing so good on a champion that they innately are just like instantly fed at the start of the game. I need to get ahead, then I can play a little bit more aggressive like that. Um, so I think over aggression as far as like macro is concerned, and also like that related to a little bit of poor decision making. Like in that last team fight, I was overcompensating and like tried to aggressively go in. I didn't account for how far distributed out my team was so they couldn't follow up. I didn't account for how my, um, how low my teammates were as far as like HP was concerned. Sure, I was full. Sure, I could proc Courage with my Q and uh, like my stun on my E, my ult, if it locked somebody down by landing. But my teammates can't necessarily follow that up. And this was a game where I went that kind of like AP-ish build so we could bring in that mixed damage for our team without Nami having to go full AP, which she did anyway. But um, there were some mistakes made by our teammates, but this isn't about focusing on them it's about focusing on us to see how we can grow right and i think if i hadn't played the early game so aggressively if i had played a bit more measured and sure been aggressive but been calculatingly aggressive i think we could have gotten ourselves a much stronger lead early which would have transitioned us through the mid game a little bit better we started to lose control around the mid game and again, I don't think that was because of the itemization because it was mostly physical damage composition. I don't think that's why. I think it's because that itemization came in very late. I think it was because we didn't get ourselves enough of a lead and we continued to play a little bit too aggressively. We weren't farming up as much as we could have been, taking the easy farm of our jungle, controlling the river properly. We just sort of went in and that distracts us from our own plays. If we had been a little bit more measured, and only taking objectives in the river, maybe we would have seen more opportunities to gank lanes instead of doing these crazy ganks like from behind. Not the best. So I think overall the lesson here is to play, and again, this is something we noticed in other Sejuani games we were playing today, play the early game macro a little less overly aggressive. <laughs> we want to be aggressive, that's good, but we want to be calculatingly aggressive. So I think that's the lesson for today. So hopefully this is helpful to you guys. Uh, if you guys play a little bit overly aggressive yourself or you have a buddy who does, maybe send them this video. Uh, I know Sej is considered the new OP, so we might have people following my mindset thinking, oh, I've been doing well on her and she's the OP that everybody's banning. Let me play really aggressive and then they go a little bit too hard. So maybe this will be helpful to you or somebody you know. Uh, feel free to share. And thank you guys for hanging out. Uh, we'll see you guys next stream.